want to pay close attention to our next story. Researchers in North Carolina are working on ways to listen to and speak with man's best friend. Ari Srinivasan reports the idea of talking dogs isn't so far-fetched. Here we go, bud. Ready? Man's best friend is getting a digital nudge. Oh, let's do there. Okay. David Roberts, a computer science professor, and his team at North Carolina State University are inventing new ways to talk and listen to dogs, like Roberts' Labrador Retriever, Diesel. We're developing the technologies that are going to help us, what we like to say, decode or, or interpret what our dogs are saying or communicating to us, as well as help us communicate back to our dog. This prototype harness allows researchers to send wireless commands to dogs in the form of vibrations, while multiple sensors on the device send information from the dog back to researchers. The mission that I have in connecting technologies in dogs and humans is to help improve that vocabulary. The wireless transmission is using the Wi-Fi, the wireless internet. A dog of the future won't wear anything so clunky if collaborator Alfred Boskert has anything to do with it. He's with the university's computer science department of electrical engineering. He hopes to shrink all the sensors down into a collar. Boskert says his inspiration came from the movie Up. Speak! Hi there! <gasps> Did that dog just say hi there? Oh, yes. My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. While the researchers don't make any claims to develop actual voices for dogs, they do believe that multiple sensors which monitor canine physiology, like changes in heart and respiratory rates, can help their human companion hear and understand what a dog is feeling. We try to understand the emotion of the dog, and uh, they have a the emotion of the dog. emotion of the dog. When we get uh, excited, our heart rate uh, goes higher, and we start to uh, breathe faster. And uh, sometimes it also affects our body temperature and our voice changes. So we have physiological sensors or health sensors, and those send uh, information about the uh, uh, sympathetic system or the health of the dog or uh, so in its heart when, So you can tell when a dog is stressed. Exactly. Dog is stressed or, or when it's excited. Yep, exactly. Okay. That enables us to identify things like stress and anxiety and differentiate those things from excitement, uh, happiness, relaxation. People often misinterpret these things with dogs, and by being able to monitor these things that are not uh, uh, necessarily obvious, confuse those data together and provide information to handlers in real time, maybe either a cell phone or a tablet app or or sending them a text message, just a subtle way to alert them to things that are going on with their dog. Somewhat forward and left. Left. On your way. For Sean Mielan, the ability to both talk to and understand his guide dog Simba is crucial. Find the stairs. A graduate student in the university's computer science department, Mielan lost his eyesight early in life. Simba, let's go upstairs. Guide dogs are trained to stay calm in all situations, and without the ability to see Simba's body language, Milan says it can be hard to recognize his dog's emotional state. Good boy. Guide dogs have an incredibly tough job. They are trained not to show stress. So if it, they're feeling hot, or if they're feeling cold, or if they're you know distressed either emotionally or actually in physical pain, a lot of the time they won't show that. What is it that someone with a guide dog would do on a daily basis that would be assisted by computers. I envision having some kind of mechanism in the handle that maybe vibrates when he's feeling upset about something. So maybe we're walking down the street and uh, there's a dog loose, you know, two blocks ahead of us and Simba sees this, but he has no way of saying that to me, right? So by feeling that, uh, by getting a representation that he's stressed out about something up ahead, I can actually go ahead and decide before we get there to find another path around. So I might not be actually aware of what was stressing him out, but I can still take that action to move us away from that area. One of the most interesting applications for smart harnesses may be with search and rescue dogs, whose job is to go into dangerous spaces that humans cannot reach, like the aftermath of the World Trade Center bombing, or the earthquake in Haiti, disaster sites where dogs played a prominent role in recovery.
Tiny cameras, microphones, gas, and heat sensors could relay vital information to first responders who may be out of sight. Something like that would be really beneficial because it's... Roberts has been consulting with North Carolina search and rescue volunteer Tracy Collins. The next generation of search dogs could be very techno-savvy dogs. Search and rescue handlers could communicate with their dogs, too. So there's vibration motors here, here, back here. So vibrations are controlled by a tablet yeah, or smartphone. Yeah, so these correspond to the vibration motors that are in the heart. Exactly. Press this button and the dog feels a vibration. Yep. It's a gentle, it's non-aversive, it's not painful, it's not a punishment. It's purely a, a signal to the dog. To demonstrate, two treats are okay. placed in front of Diesel. One to his left and one to his right. What we're going to do is we're going to have Diesel sit in front of you. Sit. Good. Very good. By pressing a button on the wireless device, vibrations tell Diesel which treat he can choose. Give it about a, a second. Okay, here we go. Press right. Right. Good. Very good. Robert says such commands can get dogs to critical areas faster and get them out safely. You gotta press the left. Okay. Okay. Good. Good job. Roberts and his team plan to advance their canine computer technology in the next two years with a recently awarded grant from the National Science Foundation. Ari Srinivasan, PBS NewsHour in Raleigh, North Carolina.